Welcome to the Church of Christ at Washington Park. to him let the dead bury the dead but go and preach the kingdom of God and another said Lord I will follow you but let me first go and bid farewell which are at my house and Jesus said unto him no man having put his hand to the plow <clears throat> looking back is fit for the kingdom of God <clears throat> and as I was reading that what came to my mind is that I'm a Christian, but you know, somebody ever told you something that then they said, but that word but changed everything they just said. Yes, I love you, but I'm going to give you some money, Brother Walker, but that word but changed everything. <clears throat> I'm a Christian, but and how would that work? Somebody said, well, I'm a Christian, but I believe in a prosperity doctrine. <clears throat> I don't know what's going on this morning. I believe in the prosperity doctrine. <clears throat> Excuse me one minute. <clears throat> I don't know if you've heard of that prosperity doctrine. This is what they'll say. They'll say being poor is a sin. Mm -hmm. What they'll tell you is anyway, all, always God will will for you is to have health and wealth. <clears throat> you're, not, you're not a Christian if you're not healthy and wealthy. Uh, they would also say God promised Abraham's blessings and the same blessings he promised Abraham, he's going to give them to you. They would also say God is not magnified when you are broken, when you are poor. God is only magnified when you have money. They will say Tithing is a means of getting rich. They'll say, now, if you don't have money, you send me some money. Because the more money you tithe, the more money. It's all about prosperity. And you know who wind up with the money? That person does. Mm -hmm. And they will say, God's word, to, God words to, God uses words to create. But we can't use our words to create. Right. They'll say, well, all you have to do is name it and claim it. If you want it, you name it and say, God, I want it. If you claim it, you just say, God, I claim it. See, they're Christians, but they don't believe in God. And they'll say, godly Christians don't suffer. If you are a Christian, you should never suffer. Brother Thomas, you should never have any pain. You should never have any problems. <clears throat> Excuse me. All you need to do is just be a Christian. They're Christians, but... But the Bible says in 1 Peter 4, 12, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials. What does fiery mean? That means it's going to be some trouble. Yes, Which do try you as though some strange things happen unto you. He said you should already be prepared for this. But rejoice, huh? Rejoice. Did he say that right? Rejoice when you're going through something? 
Rejoice when you're going through some ups and downs. Does this seem like a prosperity doctrine? These are Christians, but. That word but just changed everything. He says rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's suffering. You're going through what Christ went through. In order to get the glory, you got to go through the suffering. Nobody just goes straight to the glory without going. You're going to go through some things in this life. You say, preach on me, all right, but you just keep living. Because <laughs> it's coming. We all are going to have some ups and downs in this life. So I don't want you to be a Christian, but because I want you to know up front, suffering is a part of being a Christian. Yeah. You can't leave God when something goes wrong. You know, that's what Job wife told Job. Yeah. She said, do you still maintain your integrity? Yes, you, lost your, you lost your children. You lost all your wealth. You lost yeah. Curse God and die. He said, you seem like one of the silly women. Yeah. He said, because we don't have prosperity without, con without contradiction. That's right. It's not gonna be, you're not going to be on that mountaintop all the time. Yeah. Sometimes we're in the valleys. Yeah. Yeah. And Jesus in the Bible said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will feel no evil because thou art with me. Yeah. That's what happens. God goes with us. But we're going to have some suffering. He says, For you be, re you, for you be reproached for the name of Christ. Happy are you. What? He says, Happy are you. For the spirit of the glory of God rests upon you. The spirit of God is resting upon you. For you, on you, and their part, on their part, he is evil spoken of. But on your part, he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, as a thief, as an evildoer, as a busybody. Now, I, I was reading this, I'm thinking, he put a murderer and a thief. And the evil do with somebody that's a busybody that's going around talking. <laughs> he put all those in the same category. He says, as a busybody or in in other men's matters, stay out of those people's business. Stay out of those people's house. Somebody always telling you, child, if it was my husband, you don't even have a husband. <laughs> child, if it was my wife, you don't even have a wife. Stay out of those people's business. It said, yet if a man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. I'm telling you, you're going to go through some things. It's not, it's not a prosperity doctrine. It's the fact that Jesus loved us enough to suffer, so we don't have to suffer too. Amen. Don't run out on God because things are, what's going to always be right? You know, I was telling my wife, you know, people work hard to be able to move and afford to live in a neighborhood, and they get in the neighborhood, and the people around don't want them in the neighborhood. <laughs> and then you say, well, I'm going to buy me a lot of property, and I'm going to put my animals on this property, and then you got coyotes and wolves and stuff <laughs> eating your animals. No matter where you go, it's not going to be perfect. No, sir. You know what we're trying to make? We're trying to make it heaven, bro. Because <laughs> this world, I'm telling you right now, this world is not going to be it's not gonna be perfect. Because no, no, as soon as you get over your hip ache, your knees start bothering. As soon as you get over that, there's something. I'm trying to tell you that there's no prosperity doctrine. Don't get discouraged because you go through some suffering because God is just testing you and testing me. You know, some people leave God in a minute. <laughs> No, it's in 1 Peter 4 12. In 1 Peter 4 12, what does he say there, brother? Beloved, mm -hmm. take it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you. It's to test us. You know, the teacher didn't hate you when she gave you the test, right? <laughs> she just was trying to, or he was just trying to find out, Brother Jones, where they stand. Mm -hmm. What do you need to know more? Where do I need to concentrate my efforts? When God tests us, it's not for his benefit. It's for our benefit. Yeah. And that's why we go through these trials. By the way, in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21. 1 Peter 2, 21. What does he say there, brother? For even here unto uh -huh. be called. Uh -huh. Because Christ also suffered for us. Uh -huh. Leaving us an example. Oh, you mean Christ suffering is an example to me? Yeah. But no, you, 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 you look at Club Road Dollar, mm -hmm. and they say, oh, no, no, God never wants you broken. God never wants you hungry. And you just need to claim it and, and name it. And, that's not the way it is. Christ suffered. We're going to suffer too. And, uh, and the reason we should suffer is for the gospel's sake. 
Not just suffering just to go through suffering when you're doing wrong. Of course you're going to suffer if you do wrong. We're talking about self suffering for the gospel's sake because you're trying to do right. Every time you try to do right, somebody's going to say, look at them. Mm -hmm. They always got to do this. I don't want them around me. Yes. That's what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So we need, to, we need to realize that's a part of it. In Acts 5.41, and they departed from the presence of the council rejoicing that they were kind of worthy to suffer shame in the name of Jesus. You happy that you could suffer shame in the name of Jesus? See, there's some Christians, but they just want prosperity, Doc. As long as this thing good, Brother Jackson, I'll be here. Well, I can't go through no ups and downs, Brother Jackson. When I, when I go through some ups and downs, I can't, I can't make it. You need to be here whether you're up Amen. or you need to be here whether you're down. Right. Because God is the one that's blessing you when you're up and he's the one that's blessing you when you're down. Amen. And now all these people talking about prosperity. The prosperity is in Christ. Amen. And the, and the, the day in the temple in every house, they ceased not to teach to preach. They said, don't go down there preaching. They went back in and there again preaching again. In Romans 8, 18, for I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. One of these days we go through all of this stuff. One of these days when we make it to heaven, it's going to be worth it. Yes. But if you run out of here now because you got some trouble, and you run. If the fellow called me the other day. He said, I believe I got a demon, brother. <laughs> said, you need to come and see us. Man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> but there's always going to be some trouble. But don't you leave God because the suffering of this present time is not worthy to be compared. Well, it's going to be better when we make it to glory. Yes. It's going to be a wonderful thing. Yes. But if you give up because of the suffering, you won't make it. Brother Williamson, 1 Peter 1, verse 6. 1 Peter 1, 6. What does he say there, brother? Where he greatly rejoice, mm -hmm. though now for a season, mm -hmm. if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptation. You're going to go through something. Right. Okay. That the trial of your faith be much more precious than that of gold. You mean going through these ups and downs and it's trying me to make sure I'm not going to leave the Lord and it's testing me is more precious than gold? You know what's going to happen with the gold, right? You're going to leave it here. But your faith is something you have always. Don't get mad at God when you go through something. Thank God to give me the strength to make it through. Thank God to help me to learn what I need to learn in this time of trial. You know, that COVID tested a lot of people. A lot of people used to be in here. They're not in here anymore. Because they figured out that was more worth, worth more than them than God. And you know what? In the day of judgment, they're going to wish they had to stay. <laughs> what else does he say, brother? Go to trial with fire. Mm -hmm might be found unto praise and honor and glory of the appearing of Jesus Christ. That's where you want it, the praise and the honor of glory. When you see Jesus crack the sky, mm -hmm. that's where it's going to be. Yeah. You say, Brother Jackson, I'm worried about it now. I'm worried about eating, putting food on my table. I'm worried about the, Jesus says, Thank, give no thought to what you're going to eat, drink, or wear. Because your Heavenly Father knows you need all these things. If you're a Christian, God's going to take care of that. And even if you're not a Christian, He make, the, make it to rain on us just and unjust. But it's something more than what you got to eat and what you got to put on and what you where you live. It's your soul. You're going to have to get an account of that soul. I'm telling you today, don't say I'm a Christian, but those words, that sentence should never be together. I'm a Christian, that's it. There is no but. Luke 6, 26. Woe unto you when, men, when all men shall speak well of you. Oh, you know that person. They, they, no, you need, they need to be speaking bad about you sometimes. They know that. They, this and that. You know, they standing up for the Lord. I don't like them. They always stand up. They always talking about you. They need to speak bad about you sometimes. The lady said to me, she said, you know, I'm, I'm going to ask you a question. She said, I, 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 I can't find, I don't really don't believe there's a hell. I said, yeah, there is a hell. <laughs> she said, well, I look in the Bible, I say, Matthew 10, 28. Brother, wait. Yeah, Matthew 10, 28. I say, Matthew 10, 28 proves that there's a hell. He said, I look, she said, I look in the Bible. Well, you need to look there. Yeah, yeah. And Matthew 10, 28, what does he say, brother? 
and fear not them which kill the body, mm -hmm. but are not able to kill the soul. Right. Uh, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Now, who can do that? That's God. Mm -hmm. Don't fear man. You fear God who can destroy both soul and body. Where? You in hell. Man. Oh, there's a hell. And so these people had to go through something. What about Jesus? Did Jesus go through any suffering? Yeah. And Luke 24, 26. Ought not that Christ have suffered these yeah. things and to enter into his glory? Man. You're going to go through something. What about Paul? Did Paul go through anything? In Acts 9, 16. If I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Amen. You know what he said in 2 Corinthians 2, 2 Timothy 2, 3, 12? He says, yeah, all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. There's no prosperity doctrine. You just believe in Jesus. You just trust in Jesus when things are good. You trust in Jesus when things are tough. You just keep trusting in Jesus. Somebody said, well, I'm a Christian, but I'm not going to defend Jesus and his word. If somebody talk about your mama, you'll knock them down. If somebody talk about the Lord, you ain't going you ain't gonna say a word. Yeah. You're gonna play like you did even him. You heard him. Yeah. Defend the Lord, defend his word. I'm a Christian, but don't I'm not getting I'm not getting caught up into that stuff, Brother Jackson. The Bible tells me in Philippians 1 verse 16, the form, the former preached Christ for selfish ambition, not sincerely, supposing to add afflictions to my chains, but the latter out of love. Knowing that I am appointed the King James set for the defense of the gospel. I'm ready to defend the gospel. Right. I'm going to tell you, look, brother, I love you, but what you're saying is wrong. I'm not going to try to get in your face and straighten you out. And that's not my, that's not my position. My position is just to show you what the Bible says. Amen. It's up to you to change, but you got to be willing to speak. That's why I said in Jude 3, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and to exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the way. I was going to write about something else, but I had to change it and write about you earnestly contend. What does it mean to contend? That means you're wrestling. You're, you're contending for the faith. Somebody said, I'm a Christian, but don't ask me to, don't ask me to defend Jesus. <laughs> Don't ask me to get into a, 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 a religious discussion. Because one thing you don't discuss is religion and politics. You never just know if you're a Christian, you defend the Lord. Yeah. Don't, there's no buts about that. All right, all right. This is what Paul did in Acts 18 and verse 28. He vigorously refuted the Jews publicly. See, we get quiet when we get in public. Mm -hmm. We don't want to say anything. Yeah. But Jesus is the one that saved my soul. Yeah. Jesus is the one that picked me off the ground and lifted me up and, and clean dusted me up. Jesus is the one that did it. Yeah. Yeah. And you can't be afraid to say it. Vigorously right. refuted the Jews publicly showing from the scriptures. That's what we use, the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Nobody don't want to hear what you're talking about. We need the scriptures that Jesus is the Christ. You know what he did? did in Acts 17, 17. Therefore he disputed in the synagogues with the Jews and with devout persons in the market daily with them that met with him. You got to be able to stand up. I know one time Brother Nancy was at a funeral he got in the pulpit. I don't know if I would have done that. <laughs> but they was having a funeral and they were saying now if you want to be saved just come forward and say this prayer and say this in this prayer and Brother Nash jumped up in the pulpit they go shoot Brother Nash and he said no that's not what you're doing he that believe in that and baptize you you got to be willing to say that I'm telling you you can't be a Christian but not willing to defend the Jesus Christ and the gospel yes you know what Aquila and Priscilla did in Acts 18 and verse 4? And he re and he reasoned in the, in the synagogues every Sabbath and persuaded both Jews and Greeks. That's what they did. They, they reasoned. I'm not saying be argumentative. You got some people, they're, gonna, they're ready to argue. If you're ready to argue, just leave it alone. You just go ahead. The Bible says, they who will be ignorant, let them be ignorant. The guy was in the barbershop and he was saying, you see that building over there? 
You say that's the church over there, that church, they, 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 they should have, they should have a new building by now, they should have this and a new parking lot. And, and I said, you know what? I said, that building is not the church. Come on. The people are the church. And if they're learning the gospel, that's what matters. Well, I told you this. I mean, I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not going to argue If you want to think the building is the church, you go right in. But the people are the church. We're the ones who are representing God. We're the ones who need to make a difference. So we can't say, I'm a Christian, but keep that phrase out of your mouth. You know what Stephen said? A Stephon? Brother Wade says, it's Stephon. <laughs> step it. Step it. But Acts 752, which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute and they all and they killed those who foretold of the coming of the just one of whom now you have become betrayers and murderers? You killed him. No, they did the Stephen, they stoned him to death. What I'm saying is you won't have to be able to speak up. Because if they talk about your mama, you're gonna knock them down. If they talk about your daddy, you're gonna knock them down. If they talk about your preacher, <laughs> you're going to knock them down. <laughs> anyway, you've got to be willing to stand up for the Lord. Brother Wick, in Mark chapter 8, verse 38. Mark 8, 38. Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me, and of my words, in this adulterous and sinful generation, mm -hmm. of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed. He's going to be ashamed of us. Somebody say, well, I don't believe this, and I don't. Just say, well, this is what the Bible is. You don't have to argue with them, but you can't be ashamed of them. Yeah. In Mark 10, 33, Brother Williams, in Mark 10, 33, what does he say there? The they were in the way going up to Jerusalem, or oh, 30. Say, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, mm -hmm. and the Son of Man shall be delivered unto the chief priests, mm -hmm. and unto the scribes, right. and they shall condemn him to death. Jesus said, Now I'm going to be delivered, and they're going to condemn me to death. What else did he say, brother? And shall deliver him to the Gentiles. Uh huh. And they shall mock him, uh huh. And shall scourge him, right. And shall spit upon him, mm -hmm. right. And shall kill him. Would, would you do that for some? Would you let somebody do that to you for somebody else? Mm -hmm. The reason we defend Jesus, because he's done so much for us. Amen. He's helped us more than we can ever help ourselves. Yes. He knew he was going to be beaten. He knew they were going to spit on him. When you take somebody spitting in your face, what you'll do? You know you'll knock them down. You stop by and say, if you want not, Jesus suffered that for you. Right. And Jesus suffered that for you. <laughs> and we're not going to stand up for him. We're going to let him just throw him under the bus. And we won't defend the gospel. I'm a Christian, but don't you ask me to defend the gospel. Mm -hmm. Look at what he did in Isaiah 53, verse 3. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow, acquainted with grief, and with and we hid as it were our faces from him. And he was despised, and he was esteemed, and he and we esteemed him not. Surely had he borne who sin, who griefs? Our griefs. Our griefs. And carried who sorrow? Our, our sorrows. Yet we did not esteem him and stricken him and smitten of God and afflicted. And he was wounded for whose transgressions? Our transgressions. Our transgressions. And you don't have the gall, the nerve to stand up for Jesus when somebody putting him down? There's a problem somewhere. Yeah. You, you, you're supposed to stand up for your family. Yeah. Especially somebody who died for you. Yeah. Don't tell me I'm a Christian, but don't ask me to talk about the Lord. <laughs> don't ask me to defend the Lord. Don't have the gospel. Romans 1.16, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. What I'm trying to tell you is that you can't be a Christian and not defend the Lord. Because he's done too much for you. And, and the reason you're here today is because God has blessed you. And we need to, be, and we need to take advantage of that. He says, for well, our, our transgressions and was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace. He took our whooping. Yeah, yeah. You know, they don't call it whooping now, brother. They yeah. call it spanking. Yeah. Uh, you know, back in the day, they used to whoop us. Then <laughs> you have to go pull a limb or a branch. Yeah, there wasn't no twig now. <laughs> Chad will tell you, 
<laughs> you had to go out there and come back with a little twig. You got to get a, you got to get something that's gonna hurt. He was chastised. He was bruised for our chastisement of our peace, which was upon him, and with the stripes were stripes we are healed. With his stripes we're healed. Yeah. Every time he, he took a beating for us, it healed us. How many of you would take a beating for somebody else? Mm -hmm. yeah. You say, no, don't beat, don't beat, don't beat me. Yeah. How many brothers and brother Jonathan, brother, brother Walker, how many brothers and sisters you had? A bunch of them. How many, how many times did you take a whipping for your brother and sister? No, I know that's right. But Christ took a, Christ took a chastisement for us. I'm telling you, we have to stand up for him. But not only that. Somebody say, I'm a Christian, but I don't need the church. What? I know you've never heard that, right? Mm -hmm. Brother Jackson, all I need is Jesus. I don't need the church at all. I'm a Christian, though. There's, there's something wrong with that. How can you be a Christian and do not need the church? The Bible says, okay, Brother Jackson, I'm going to show you how. In 1 Corinthians 2, 2, For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. As long as I know that Jesus Christ was crucified, I don't need the church, Brother Jackson. And I'm going to show you another scripture, Brother Jackson, in Galatians 6, 14. But, but may, may, I never, may it never be that I would boast except in the cross of the Lord Jesus. He said, I'm boasting in the cross. You know, when you boast in the cross back then, that means you're going through something. You're going to die. Mm -hmm. You know, we wear crosses today, and, I, and that's all fine. Mm -hmm. But when you boast in the cross, when somebody was carrying their cross, you know where they were headed? They were headed to be crucified. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm just going to boast in the cross. Brother Jackson, what's that got to do with the church? And you know what I still say in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. What's that got to do with the church, Brother Jackson? And Brother Jackson, I also read in 1 Corinthians 1, verse 23, but we preach Christ crucified unto, Jew, unto the Jews a stumbling block, but unto the Greeks is foolishness. That's all I need to know. I don't need to know anything about the church. But let me ask you this. Why do you preach that? Why, in Matthew 16, 18, did Jesus build a church? Matthew 6, upon this rock I shall build my church, right. and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. If you don't need the church, why did he build it? Yeah. Brother Jackson, I don't need the church. On Acts 2, 47, God added half of faith with all the people, and he added to the church daily yeah. those that were being saved. Well, if you're not saved, you're not, if you're not added to the church, you're not saved. Right. But if you don't need the church, then you won't be saved. True. Somebody said, Brother Jackson, no, 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 you, you stop reading. In 1 Corinthians 12, 12, brother. In 1 Corinthians 12, 12. Why are we baptized into the church? If the church is irrelevant. And I'm a Christian, but I don't need the church, brother Jackson. I don't even need you, brother. Mm. I'm, I'm a Christian all by myself. Well, why are we baptized into one body? Mm. In 1 Corinthians 12, 12. What does he say there, brother? Whereas the body is one, uh -huh. it had many members. Right. And all the members of that one body being many are mm -hmm. one body, uh -huh. so also is Christ. Right, so, go ahead. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. We all been baptized into one body. Mm -hmm. What's that one body? Church. It's the church. Somebody said, well, I don't need to be baptized. Well, there's no way you're going to be in the body of Christ. Right. Just stop talking about I'm a Christian, but there is no but. Mm -hmm. If you're going to follow Jesus, follow him home. They said, well, I'll follow you, but first. But I'll follow you but this. I'll follow you but that. That's not going to work. We've got to put him first in our life. If the church is irrelevant, you tell me why is it, why is it preached about it, Acts 8, verse 12? Why are you going to preach about it if it's irrelevant? In Acts 8, 12, what does he say, brother? But when they believe Philip, yeah. preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God. Now, what's the kingdom of God in the day's time? It's the church. If you're outside the body of Christ, you're outside his kingdom. Yes. It's, it's, it's so simple. If the church is irrelevant in Acts 20 and 28, why did Jesus buy it? Why would you purchase something that you don't need? Have you ever purchased something that you didn't need? Yeah, but you know what he used to purchase this? His blood. That makes this the most valuable thing on earth. In Acts 20 and 28, what does he say, brother? 
Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseer, mm -hmm. to feed the church of God which he has purchased with his own blood. Why would Jesus purchase a church that we don't need to be a part of? You said, but I need, I, I love God, but I, I love Jesus, but I don't need that. You need the church. Because it's the most expensive thing on this earth. Because it was purchased with the blood of Jesus. Well, why do you keep saying it, Brother Jackson? What, what's the big, what, do you mean, what do you mean by it? It is always singular. It is never plural. Whenever you see the word it, it's talking about one thing and one thing only. And the Bible said in Ephesians 5.24, Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let their wives be to their husbands in everything. Mm -hmm. Husbands, love your wife, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. He didn't give himself for them. Right. He gave himself for it. Yeah. That he might sanctify and cleanse it. with the washing of the water by the word, and that he might present yeah. a, to himself a a glorious church, not having any spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that yeah. should be holy and without blemish. Jesus only built one church. Yeah. Right. And somebody going around said, Brother Jackson, I, I'm a Christian, but I don't need the church. I don't even need to come to church. Something wrong with your Bible. You got the wrong Bible. You know, they went to the island and they gave out all these Bibles and they said, we don't have time to teach you about the gospel now, but we'll come back in a year. And when they came back in the year, the Bible, the, the fellow said, well, I want to be baptized. And like, okay, I'll baptize you. And then, it, and then it, what they did was sprinkle a little water here, put a little water here, put a little water there. And the fellow said, what you doing? He said, I'm baptizing. He said, you must have gave me the wrong Bible. Because <laughs> the Bible said a baptism is a going down into and a coming up out. I'm trying to tell you, you can't say I'm a Christian, but the prosperity, I love the prosperity doctrine. You know what God says? If you're going to be a Christian, you're going to suffer some persecution. You're going to go through some ups and downs. Mm -hmm. I'm a Christian, but don't ask me to defend the Lord. Don't ask me to defend the word of God. I'm not standing up for anybody. Mm -hmm. But as soon as somebody steps on your toe, you're ready to kill them. As soon as somebody cut you off, you're ready to kill them. But you won't stand up for the Lord. All right. I'm a Christian, but I don't need the church. I don't even need to go to church. Something wrong with your Bible, you got the wrong Bible. <laughs> what I'm trying to tell you is that there, this should never be in a sentence. I'm a Christian, but. but all we need to do is say, I'm a Christian. Amen. If you want to be a Christian, what you have to do is hear his word, Romans 10, 17, and then you have to believe what he says, Hebrews 11, 6, and then you're going to have to repent, Luke 13, 3. I'll tell you next, if you repent, and you're going to have to confess with your mouth that you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And then you're going to have to be baptized for the remission of your sin. But Jesus said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. So I want to know today, will you say I'm a Christian? Will you come down this aisle? Give me your hand. Give Christ your heart. Say, Brother Jackson, I know God has been so good to me. And I know, Brother Jackson, God has brought me a mighty long way. Because I know many of us didn't even know how we were going to make it here today. Many of us didn't even know how, how the food was going to be on our table. You know, it's, it's been many a times we ate beans, beans, yeah. beans. Our church grew up on some beans and goulash. Yeah. My wife can make that goulash, man. She can make that, she can make that meal stretch. <laughs> but, but, but God has been good to each and every one of us. We got children, we got grandchildren, they're all healthy, they're all thriving. You know, we got educated people. Now we got, we go to colleges, we do it. But you know what? Don't forget God. What happened is we get a little money in our pocket. And we get a little sense in our head, and we get some Jordans on our feet, and all of a sudden we're too good for anybody. Don't forget God. You know, in John chapter 2, they went to this wedding. When they went to this wedding, the wine ran out. And Jesus' mom went to Jesus and said that they, they wine had run out. And Jesus said, Woman, what does that have to do with me? And so she went to the to caterers, to the people that were putting on the event, and she said, Whatever he tells you to do, you just do it. And then when they got these copper pots, these bottles, and they filled it up with regular water, and they filled it up, filled it, filled it up with regular water, and he changed water to wine. Yes, Guess what? He does the same thing with us. Mm -hmm. He takes some old broken down, no good, half, yeah. half this and half that person, and he fills us up, right. and we become something or, from ordinary to extraordinary. Yeah. Maybe somebody come down this aisle today.
Give me your hand, give Christ your heart. Say, Brother Jackson, I'm, I, I don't want, I don't never want to use the word phrase a Christian, but Brother Jackson, all I want to do is be a Christian. Because somebody said, well, Brother Jackson, I, I'm a Methodist. But the problem is you never read that in the Bible. Mm -hmm. yeah. Somebody said, Brother Jackson, I'm a Baptist. All right, no. But, you know, that's not in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Somebody said, Brother Jackson, I'm a seven-day Adventist. Right, no. Okay, where well, do you find that scripture? Well, I can't find the scripture, Brother Jackson, but that's what I am. Exactly. See, what I'm trying to tell you is that you can only be one thing and one thing on, that's a Christian. Yes, right. and you be willing to do that today. Come down this aisle. Give me a hand, give Christ your heart. God has been too good for all of us Amen. to make these mistakes that go on and on and on. God it deserves the best. They say, I'll follow you, God, but there is no buts. We fall down, we get back up. We just keep on keeping on. Somebody say, you don't stop till you make it home. We just going to keep on keep keeping on till we make it home. Maybe there's someone here today that will be willing to try that. You tell them to move out of your way. You're coming down the aisle. You're going to give me your hand. You're going to give Christ your heart. Or maybe there's someone who's a, who's a Christian and you start making excuses. Oh, Brother Jackson, I would, but Brother Jackson, I would have, I should have, I could have. All those things are just excuses. When you stand in front of the Lord on the last day, he's not going to take any excuses. You know, you can stand up there and say, I would have, but that old no good wife of mine. Or I could have, but that old husband of mine. Or I could have, but my mom and my dad and my children. You can blame whoever you want to blame, but the problem going to be on you. And the problem going to be on me right. if we don't respond to the gospel. Amen. Never say I'm a Christian, but, but. we're going to stand for something. Amen. We're going to be the kind of people in the world that people want to know more about what God stands for because we're going to live right. When everybody else using four-letter words, we're not going to do that. Amen. When everybody else cutting people off and doing stuff wrong and throwing fingers, we won't do that. When everybody else explodes, we're going to be calm. Amen. Because we represent Jesus Christ. Amen. So let that be known. As together we stand and sing the song of limitation. Jesus, my Savior, to Bethlehem came. Thank you for visiting the Church of Christ at Washington Park. Hope to see you again soon.